Hallelujah. God bless you tonight. Would you reach your hands toward Brother Brad tonight as he comes? He's going to teach to us, and if he turns into preaching, it'll be all right to whatever the Lord has. Everybody say, Lord, anoint him good in the name of Jesus. We pray that you touch Brother Brad. Use him, Lord. Anoint our hearts. Condition our hearts to receive your word tonight in Jesus' name. Well, everybody say praise the Lord tonight. Lord, lift up your hands in the presence of the Lord. Let's give God some praise and some honor and some glory tonight. The anointing of God is so strong in this building tonight, church. Oh, I can barely stand. Come on, lift up your hands and your voice unto the Lord God. Hallelujah, God, we love you tonight, Lord. God, with all of our hearts, oh, Lord. God, with all of our souls. Father, with all of our minds, oh, God. Lord, tonight, with all of our strength, God, we love you, O oh Lord. God, we exalt you, O oh Lord. God, we praise you, O oh Lord. God, we magnify you. Lord, we exalt your holy name. God, we lift you up. Lord, we bless you and we love you tonight. God, we're great and greatly to be praised. David said, marvelous are thy works, and that thy soul knoweth right well. Go ahead and clap your hands unto the Lord. Somebody shout unto God with a voice of triumph. I'll tell you what, the power of God is all over me right now. And I may be tired in body, but I'm refreshed in the Holy Ghost. Do you believe God's a miracle working God tonight? Do you believe that God's sister Ash has something special for us? I believe tonight you can leave here healed. I believe tonight you can leave here thrilled. I believe you can be delivered by the anointing of the Holy Ghost tonight. Do you believe that? Do you believe he's a miracle working God? Oh, Brother Pat, I, I believe I've got my shouting shoes on tonight, as, I, as I'm fond of saying. God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. You know what David said? He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. He didn't want to do it alone. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. If you come to magnify him tonight, if you come to exalt his holy name, and you come to give him praise, Oh, hallelujah, I tell you, I love this anointing. Sister Vicki, I love the Holy Ghost. God is real, is he not? I feel the Holy Ghost all over in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I lay my hands on Sister Vicki. Holy Ghost, all over. Ask you, Lord, to give her a blessing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, I ask you to stretch forth your hand. God, to touch and to bless your people tonight. You know, the apostles prayed in Acts 4. They said, Lord, stretch forth your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the Holy Child Jesus. And Brother Turner, when they prayed, the place was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They spake the word of God with boldness. God's a miracle-working God. Brother Child, do you believe that? And I feel him so strong. Go ahead on a Wednesday night. I just found out at 6.35 I'm teaching, preaching tonight, so we'll see what the Holy Ghost has, Sister Ash. How do you believe in the gifts of the Holy Ghost? I'm off my subject for a moment. Brother, I know you believe in the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, discerning of spirits. Who believes in the gifts of healing? The working of miracles. How about the gift of faith? You believe in speaking with divers kinds of tongues and the interpretation of tongues and prophecy? I believe we need the power of God in our churches like never before. We're going to go through some things in this nation. This nation's in trouble. But thank God the nation may be going down, but I believe the church is going up. Can you say amen? And I want to be ready when the Lord comes back. Whether you pre-trim, mid-trim, or post-trim, brother, we've got to be ready because he is going to come back for a people that's made themselves ready. Do you believe that tonight? I like old David. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. He didn't want to do it alone, Brother Max. One man one time said, I'm sure you've heard this. He said, let's build God a habitation. Somebody else was thinking maybe along the lines of, of a new building. But no, he's talking about praise. You believe tonight that when we praise him, God inhabits the praises of Israel. God inhabits the praises of his people. If you want to feel the Holy Ghost before we go to the word of God, everybody lift up your voice unto the Lord and give God praise from the heart. Magnify. Oh God, we praise you tonight, Lord. God, let your spirit fill the temple, your people, Lord. Your bodies, oh Lord, that you dwell in tonight. God, fill us overflowing. God, with your presence and with your power, oh Lord, and we give you the praise. Come on, church. I may throw my notes aside. Oh, Brother England, he's real, is he not, brother? And I want to say this when I first met you. There, there's a spirit of wisdom and revelation in you also. It's there. 
And I'm not trying to be a brother Pierce. I love that man of God. But it's there. There's a spirit of wisdom and revelation in you. I know that by the Holy Ghost. Someone say a familiar spirit, whatever you want to call it. I know that by the Holy Ghost is there. And there's a depth in the Word of God that God has brought you into and will bring you into more. And I'm speaking of the Holy Ghost right now, brother. And I want more depth in God. Who wants more depth in God? Who wants? Thank you, Lord. Come on now. We need the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the church. Amen. And again, I say, Sister Turner, we need the manifestation of God's spirit in the church. Who desires spiritual gifts tonight? Who wants to truly be used by God Almighty? I believe God's got some good things for us in 2016. If you believe that one more time, not unto me, but unto him, clap your hands and give him praise. I believe that, Pastor. Woo! And I don't pray with the Holy Ghost. And I don't pray with the anointing of God. This is real to me. This is my life. This book, brother, I don't want to just know it. I want to believe it, and I want to obey it. And if I do that, God will bless us. You believe that? Praise the Lord. Turn to Matthew chapter 22. We'll get right to the Word of God. If it turns into a lesson, a sermon, whatever the Holy Ghost would have. Sister Ash, I appreciate that word you gave. I just want God to bless us and meet with us tonight in a special way. I believe He'll do that. Do you? I've been up since 3.30 this morning. I work 12 hours. So I'm here, here in body, but I want to thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity. I know you're fond of the scripture be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, know the scripture. Matthew chapter 22 for our first text. The scripture says this. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him, asked Jesus a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And my title is the great commandment. And I'm going to trust as I go along. How do you believe a commandment has to be obeyed? It's not optional whether we love God or not. It's a commandment. It's not optional that we can love God with half of our heart. We've got to love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. It's not an option that we love our neighbor as ourselves. We're going to look at this tonight. Which is the great commandment in the law? Which is the greatest, really, was what he was asking. Jesus, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt. Everyone say, say shalt. shalt. That's, That's a commandment. A commandment. Yes. Brother, Brother Maxwell, Maxwell thou, thou shalt. shalt. That, that is, is a commandment of God. Of God. Thou, thou shalt, shalt love, love the Lord thy God. God. Everyone, Everyone say, with all the heart. heart. Not half, half of your heart, heart not 90%, percent, but with all of your heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great. great. Everyone, Everyone say commandment. Verse, Verse 39. 39. And the and second, second is like unto it. Thou shalt. Again, again there's, there's a commandment. A commandment. Thou, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. thyself. On, On these two, two commandments, commandments hang all the law and the prophets. If you if would you now turn, turn to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 6, six we're, going we're going to look at the first one. You go ahead and be seated. I've got quite a few scriptures. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 6, six verses, verses 4 through, through 6, six, if you'll put, put that. that. Hear, O Israel. Israel. I want you I want to notice part of the commandment, Pastor, is to hear. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. Aren't you thankful tonight you're a monotheistic people? Are you are thankful you tonight that you are apostolic? Amen. You are, Amen. as we used to be called, oneness people. Amen. You believe there's only one Lord God Almighty. Amen. You believe that He is eternal, immortal, immutable. You believe He's omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, and that in Him we live and move and have our being. And thank God tonight He's not far from any one of us. If you have the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, Brother Terry, He's in you. I thank God that my body is the temple of Almighty God. He doesn't necessarily dwell in your heart, as many people say, Lord, come into my heart. But when He fills you with the Holy Ghost, Brother England, thank God He fills you from the top of the head all the way down to the soles of the feet. You drink yourself full to overflowing with and in the Holy Ghost of God Almighty. I thank God I know whom I have believed tonight. How about you? Hear, O Israel, 
The Lord our God is one Lord. Verse 5. And thou shalt, again, there's the commandment, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Verse 6. You don't use that. And these words which I, everyone say, command thee this day shall be in thy heart. So pass on to this moment. In order to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we've got to know who he is, what he is. Thank you, Lord. I feel that no more. If you see, you see what he says, every time the Holy Ghost gives me a thought, I touch his head here. I didn't know I was doing it. The pastor brought it to my attention a few weeks or months ago. So now I'll try not to do that. You know, in John, John chapter, chapter 4, Jesus, Jesus told, told the woman at the well, you worship, you know not what. Not, not who, necessarily, necessarily but, but what. what. Then he then went he on to say what, what God is. God is, God is a, a spirit, spirit, and they and that they worship, worship him must worship him, him in spirit and in truth. truth. I thank I God I know who I serve, what, what he is, is and thank God, God I know Brother Ash where, where he is. He's, he's in Collierville First Pentecostal Church in a Wednesday night Bible lesson tonight. Amen. Amen. And thank, thank God, God he's so big, the heaven of the heaven of heavens cannot contain him. Brother Reynolds, I can't comprehend that, but through faith I believe it. Leviticus 19, 18, here is the second commandment, which is like unto the first. Why? Because it has to do with love. Loving God and loving others. Verse 18 of Leviticus 19, if you don't have it, the end part of that verse tells us that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Leviticus 19, 18. And so, and so this, this is, is the commandment, the commandment of, God, of God, to love our neighbor. Our neighbor. Brother Hayden, hey, one, one fellow one asked Jesus, Jesus Lord, Lord or Master, Master who, who is, is my neighbor? neighbor? That, person that person sitting right, right next to you on the pew tonight, tonight is your neighbor. Your neighbor. Sister Vicki, Sister, Sister Patton is your neighbor. neighbor. The, person the person you meet at Walmart, as they say in Mississippi, the person in Walmart you meet is your neighbor. Not necessarily the person that lives next door to you in your neighborhood. Sure, that's your neighbor. But your, your fellow, fellow man is your neighbor. neighbor. Right. And we're and to we're love that neighbor as ourselves. ourselves. We're, we're to do unto them as we would have them, them to do unto us. us. <laughs> and we're and going to apply our love for God, God tonight and our and love for our neighbor, our neighbor to the to Ten, Ten Commandments. Commandments. And we're going to see for a little while how love, Brother England, is the fulfilling of the law. Loving God and loving others fulfills the Ten Commandments. Do you believe tonight that if you love your neighbor, you'll work no ill to your neighbor? Love works no ill to think. I'm not trying to play it. But you know what? You know what the problem with Memphis is right now and the world is? Somebody doesn't love God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. Somebody does not love their neighbor as their self because if they did, it would be a peaceful situation in Memphis, Tennessee. You can sleep with your doors unlocked and your windows up. You can leave your keys in, the, in your automobile. If your neighbor loved you, and get and unto you, you is he, he, you would have him to do. Do, do, do. Do, do. do you follow? So, so love is the fulfilling of the Ten Commandments. So let's, so let's look, look at it. it. Exodus, Exodus chapter, chapter 20. 20. And again, and again in order to love God with all of our heart, soul, soul mind, and strength, strength we, we must, must know, know who he is. is. And Brother well, England, I'm a Godhead, Godhead man, man like you are. I love this one God message. It's a great, great big God, God that we serve, serve Brother Ash, brothers, brothers and sisters. And sisters. Again, the, the heaven, heaven, the heaven of heavens cannot contain him. him. And again, and I, I say, say in him we live and move and have our being. Brother, Brother Briggs, he's eternal. He's immortal, immortal invisible. He's the only wise God. God. If you have a God, God, he's not wise. And you're not you're wise to serve him. But this one God, and his name, by the way, is Jesus. And you've heard, you've heard me say it several times, time. if Jesus, Jesus is not his name, then God's got a problem. Because, because the name of Jesus is above is every name that is named, not, not only in this world, world but also in the world to come. It's the, the only, only name, name that has salvation, salvation in it. it. 
It's the only name that we do every word and deed in. I thank God I know who God is. I know what his name is. Amen. I thank God I'm a child of God tonight. Do you love him? Pray, go ahead and clap your hands under the Lord one more time. Lord. Exodus chapter 20, if you have it. Verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And brothers and sisters, when God brought them out, he did it with an outstretched arm. Look at all the miracles, the wonders, the signs, how God Almighty brought them out. God loved his people. Verse 3. Thou shalt, everyone say shalt, have no other gods before me. Do you believe tonight if you love God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all your strength, you'll have no other God before him. You're not going to worship Buddha. You're not going to worship Allah, the moon god. You're not going to worship all these pagan gods and deities. You're going to worship the one Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I believe. But if you don't love him, you will worship other gods. It may be a football player. It might be a dead musician or singer. It might be a movie star. It might be something or someone. But if you don't love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, Brother Pat, you're going to have another God. There's going to be some form of a deity or God in your life. Do you believe that? So love fulfills the first of the Ten Commandments. Love for God. You'll have no other. And I've got to believe, Brother Ash, that God's not going to put up with it if we do. He is quana, Q-A-N-N-A. He is a jealous God. Some of you husbands are jealous of your wives. Amen. Some of you women may be jealous of your husbands. God is jealous of his people. He's not going to share them with another God. Come on now. God's worthy of all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our strength and love for him. Come on now. And if we love him, we're not going to bow down to another God. I'm not going to worship the moon God. I'm not going to worship the sun, the host of heaven. But I'm going to worship this one Lord God who is a spirit, whose name is Jesus. The next of the Ten Commandments. Verse 4, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt, everyone say shalt, not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a, again, Q-A-N-A, jealous God. Idolatry. We're not, We're not to worship, to worship idols, idols, statues, statues images, images, again, again Buddha. Buddha. Years, Years ago, ago, I went with a man from Cambodia. Cambodia, his name was Shaw. He had, he had a necklace on, and I asked him, I said, Shaw, what, what is this that, that you're wearing around your neck? neck? He said, he it's said my it's God. God. He said, he it's said it's my father's God, God, and now it's my God. God. And you know, you know, when Moses was receiving the Ten Commandments, Pastor, and he, came he came down, down to the camp, camp. he heard, he heard a, a, a lot of noise, so to speak, a ruckus in the camp. camp. And you know you what know took what place. place? They were they worshiping a golden calf. calf. And, and Moses' anger waxed hot. hot. And he and took, he took those, those tables of the Ten Commandments, he threw them down and break them at the bottom of Mount Sinai, Mount Hor, of the Mount of God. They had already broken the Ten Commandments, or the first of the Ten Commandments. They had another God, they had an idol that they were bowing down to, a golden calf that had, well, just think, they had seen the Red Sea part. God was feeding them with manna, or soon to feed them with manna. Look at all the miracles, the wonders, the signs that God had done. And now they're worshiping a golden calf in Ida. And so Moses, when he broke the Ten Commandments, I believe it was symbolic of that they had broken the law 
by worshiping an idol. But I thank God tonight we're not worshiping a calf, we're not worshiping a stock, we're not worshiping an idol, but we are worshiping the one true God who is the eternal God who made heaven and earth, who's the living God. Do you love him tonight? Glory to the Lord. You know, even the prophets, even David in the Psalms would speak of idols. He said they have a mouth, but they can't speak. They're dumb. They have they ears, they can't hear. So to big the eyes, they cannot see. see. You can, you can set, set them in one place and you can leave and come back. He still sits there. there. I, made I made this reference to another church, church where I ministered the other day. day. I wasn't I being mean-spirited, but there's, but there's a, a, a restaurant, restaurant that I eat. eat at, a Chinese restaurant. Brother Hunter, I know you love Chinese food. I think he likes the Persian cat better than Siamese. But you know, but you they, know have they have a Buddha, Buddha on the wall, and they, and they always put a piece of fruit in front of them. A grapefruit, grapefruit, an apple, an orange. And I've, and I've always noticed it, it, it nothing's eaten out of it. it. So I, I, I made a comment one time, time maybe I'll reach, reach up there and take, take, take a bite out of it and put it back up there. That's mean spirited. But you know, we serve the true of the living God. But if you stop loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, you may just bow down to an image or an idol and worship it. But I say for me and my wife, me and my house, we're going to serve the one true God. Can you say amen? Glory. And I'm going to teach my kids about this one true God. He's the living God. He's the Almighty. Then it goes on to tell us that if we love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we'll not take his name in vain. But you know, Pastor, in order not to take God's name in vain, I've got to know, know what his, his name, name is. is. Right. I've already, already touched on it. Aren't you thankful you know what his name is? is. And I want to clarify some things. Thing. We, don't we don't pray in the name of Jehovah Ra'ah. Ra he, he is our shepherd. shepherd. But we don't, we don't pray, pray in the name of Jehovah Ra'ah. Ra we don't pray in the name of Jehovah Shammah, the Lord that is there. We don't pray in the name of Jehovah Rapha. He is our healer. We don't say, Lord, Jehovah sits anew. You are our righteousness. Jehovah Nissa, you are our banner. Jehovah Shalom, you're our peace. But we do not pray calling on the name Jehovah or, or Yahweh. And I won't get to the tetragrammaton. But we call upon him by the name of Jesus. And that name means Jehovah or Yahweh, the Savior. Come on now. And in order not to take his name in vain, we've got to know what his name is. And I've got to touch on it for a moment. Brother, it's above every, every name that is named. Name. It's, it's got, got to be God's name. name. And you have not, not heard me teach you on this. The, the Son inherited his, his name. name. Hebrews 1.4. So if so the, Son the Son of God inherited his name, his name that tells me that God's God name is Jesus. Jesus. If the Son of the Father inherited his name, that tells me the Father's name is Jesus because the writer of the Hebrews said Jesus obtained his name by inheritance. Therefore, it's above every name that is named. It's above the name of Michael and Gabriel, the angel. It's above every name that is named, not only in this world, but in the world to come. So, Brother Pat, you know this. It's got to be God's name. It's above, above every name. name. Acts 4.12 tells, tells, tells us it's the only name that has salvation in it. So if you, if you need, need salvation, salvation for your soul, soul you can you call, call Buddha, Buddha, you can call Allah, any, any other, other name, name, but we, we call, call the name of Jesus. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible says, says if you're sick, sick call, call for the elders, elders of the church, of the church let, them let them anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord, Lord Jesus, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Healing and salvation and deliverance is in the, in the name, name of the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. It's, it's got, got to be God's, God's name. name. If, if not, not, then God's God name has no salvation, salvation in it. It's, it's inferior. inferior. And you, and would, you never, would never, Brother England, England utter it at any time for any reason. reason. Why? Because Colossians 3.17 3, says, says, Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's why we baptize pastors in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, I come in my Father's name. The works I do in my Father's name. That's pretty clear to me. So we baptize in Jesus' name. We pray for the sick in Jesus' name. We don't take that name lightly. 
The Bible says we're not to take his name in vain. And so I believe if we love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we will reverence the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the name of the one true God in eternal life. Do you believe that? And I realize taking the name in vain is not just using it for vanity with it only, but swearing by that name as they did in the Old Testament days and times. But for, but for sure, sure we don't we put profanity with the name of Jesus because, because it's the it's name the that we're saved by. Do you, Do love, you love the name of the Lord, Lord Jesus? Jesus? But, I'll but I'll tell you what, if you stop loving God, God you'll, you'll take his name in vain. vain. You'll, you'll use, use profanity with it also. also. You'll, you'll bow down to an image or an idol or a football player or Elvis Presley. You'll worship a Buddha or a statue or something or someone else. But friend, God is going to be first or so to speak, Brother Haley, he's not going to be anything. He deserves all of our love, all of our devotion. And I like what you said the other day. I talked not long ago, brother, on the agape love of God. Jesus says, Simon, do you agape me? Peter said, yea, Lord, you know that I feel you thee. Then he said again, Simon, do you agape me? Peter says, yeah, Lord, Lord, you know that I feel you. Then, then Jesus, Jesus used, you did so wonderfully the other day. Jesus used the same word. But friend, I want to agape him. I want to love him with the highest form of love, with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, because he's worthy of that. So we see how love fulfills these three commandments. The fourth one, verse 8. Of Exodus, Exodus 20, remember, remember the Sabbath, Sabbath day to keep it holy. holy. Now, I don't now, want to cross your theology, theology here, here, but we're not under the Old Testament Sabbath, Sabbath law. law. When we, we become believers, believers we've entered into a spiritual rest. rest. But, I but I do believe, believe that we need to honor, honor the time that we fellowship and come together on the first day of the week. If we get out of work and we can be here, I believe that we need to be here, amen, and not work on that day. But you and I that have believed on the Lord and received the Spirit of God, we've entered into a spiritual rest and refreshing that comes from the presence of the Lord. And I'll move on. Verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Paul said in Ephesians 6, 1 through 3, that this is the first commandment with promise. Who wants your children to live long? God does not give them a promise of long life unless they honor their mother and their father, or their father and their mother. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. Put that on the board if you would, Brother Man. Paul said this is the first commandment of the ten with promise. I want, I want my children, children to live long. long. My little a girl's 33, my boy's 30. And the little I, want I want them to live many, many, many years upon the earth. earth. I want I them want to have a long life, life length, length of day. Of I want I God's blessing and favor to be upon them. them. God didn't create you to let you turn around and die the next day. Matter of fact, death is an enemy of God. And he's going to destroy it one day when the resurrection takes place. But God wants us to have long life and length of days. So here's, here's what he, what he says. says. Children, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, Lord for this, this is right. right. Honor thy father, father and mother, mother which, which is, is the first commandment. commandment. Everyone say commandment. commandment. Our, children, Our children, and they're all gone now, we're going to say children, children you, you are commanded by God to love and to honor your father and your mother. And if and they, they do, do so, God has given them a promise. They'll live what? Long on the earth. God, God will bless them. them. God, God will favor them. them. But you but know, you if know children stop honoring their mother and father, there's going to be a problem, problem there. there. Today, they, they kill, kill their parents. parents. I've, I've read, read of it many times, times brother Max, your children shooting their parents, parents, killing their parents. parents. Seemed, like Seemed like not long ago, someone shot his mother, I think, and killed her. Shot her several times. Somebody doesn't love God. Somebody doesn't love their neighbor. Someone doesn't love mom and dad. Because they're working ill toward their neighbor. But love, Brother Briggs, does not work ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Romans chapter 13. But stop loving somebody and you'll work ill to them. And they'll work ill to you. 
What's going on in Memphis and throughout the world, there's a lot of evil things taking place. Because as I said a little while ago, someone doesn't love God and someone doesn't love their neighbor as their self. Verse 13 of Exodus 20. Thou shalt not kill. You know, Pastor, I can kill you and never lay a hand on you. And you commit adultery and never have a physical contact with a man or woman. John said if a man hates his brother, he's a murderer. And no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Brother, I can never, never shoot you or stab you or attack, or attack you, but if I hate you, I murder you. And I do not have life, eternal life in me, if I hate you, if I murder you. Do you believe that? So it says, thou shalt not kill. That's an ill thing to kill somebody physically. And it's an ill thing to kill somebody in your heart by hating them and despising them. But I believe if we have the love of God, Romans 5, 5, shed a blood in our heart by the Holy Ghost. Thank God we're going to love our brother. We're going to love the household of faith. And we're going to love our neighbor as ourselves. We may not like what they do and hate what they do. But thank God we can love their soul and pray that God will save them. Do you believe that? Thou shalt not kill. And I want to clarify that I'm teaching tonight. God is for capital punishment. God instituted capital punishment in Genesis. Under the law, God commanded to kill murderers and adulterers. He didn't contradict his own law. So when the scripture says, thou shalt not kill, he was talking about murder. Romans chapter 13 tells the brother, he's got a, a Baptist nod for me when we go. But seriously, Romans 13 tells us that the police officer is the minister of God to execute Wrath on, on him that doeth evil. He, he does not bear the sword, or now a pistol, in, in vain. vain. He's, He's in a God-ordained God office. office. He, he may not, not know God, God as old saying goes from, from Adam, Adam, Brother England, but, but he's, he's in a God-ordained God office, office as a, as a not a gospel minister, minister but a but minister of God to execute wrath. If he has to shoot you, if he has he to has take your life, life, I believe it goes go down to the police officer and for sure all the way up to the executioner once a person has been found guilty in the court of law in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Every word has been established and the thing is sure. Then God said, put him to death. We rejoice when David killed Goliath. People say, I don't believe in capital punishment. I don't believe in taking life under any circumstance. Why do you rejoice when David killed Goliath? So when it says, thou shalt not murder, again, I use Memphis and other parts of the world for an example. If somebody comes up to you, Brother Abel, and shoots you, kills you, that's what the scripture is talking about. I have killed you, I have murdered you. But now, if I love you as myself, I'm not going to work ill to you. Because I don't want you to shoot me. So I'm not going to shoot you. That sounds like a pretty good deal, doesn't it? How about that, Brother Turner? I won't kill you. You don't kill me. You don't kill me. You don't kill me. I got to be around to kill you. Seriously, I don't want you to kill me, so I'm not going to kill you. That's the ill thing to kill and to murder. Love works no ill, but again, what I started, I said a moment ago, I can kill you or murder you and never lay a finger on you because I hate you, Brother Church. The next one, thou shalt not commit adultery. You put that up there if you would, Brother Man. We know the scripture. You can commit adultery, men, with a woman and never physically have any contact with her. And it goes for the lady. You can commit adultery with a man and never have any physical contact. It goes back to what? Looking upon that woman to lust after her. And if you've done that, you have committed adultery with her already in your heart. Who wants a pure heart? Who wants a pure mind and a good conscience before God? It's an ill thing to commit adultery. 
God says, says thou, thou shalt, shalt not. not. That, that is, is a commandment of God, God Brother Turner. It's, it's not, not optional. optional. But, if but if somebody stops loving, they're wrong. If somebody, somebody stops, stops loving their neighbor, neighbor as their self, self, he may, he may go, go with that, that man's wife. wife. Or she or may she go, go with, with that, that woman's husband. husband. And God, and God hates, hates that. Can you say amen? You can clap your hands under that if you want to. I want a clean heart. I want a pure mind. And a lot of these things I'm talking about, we're going to have to walk in the Holy Ghost. We're going to have to walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Who knows what's in the world, Brother English? You can quote it. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. That's all that's in the world. The world passeth away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth, continuation, he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So we've got to walk in the Holy Ghost. We've got to stay full of the Spirit of God, not to hate, not to steal, not to murder, not to take God's name in vain, not to worship others, other gods. I think we need the fruit of the Spirit too, Pastor. If I say love, joy, Peace, Peace long-suffering, long suffering, gentleness, gentleness, goodness, goodness faith, faith, meekness, meekness temperance, temperance, and, and against, against such, such there, there is, is no law. law. Brother Hoyt, there's not a law in God's Word, word that says, Thou shalt not have gentleness. gentleness. There's, there's not a law in this Holy Bible that says, Thou shalt not have goodness. Thou shalt not have love. Thou shalt not have peace. But there, there is, is a law against the works of the flesh. flesh. Thou, thou shalt, shalt not commit adultery. Thou, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. kill. Do you believe, Do you believe that? that? Verse 15, I'm hurrying a few more minutes. More minutes. Thou, thou shalt, shalt not steal. steal. Who else got picked up? Brother Kelly got picked up. Brother Kelly, Kelly, Brother Kelly if, if I love you and myself, I will, I will do, do unto you as I'd have you to do unto me. me. If I, I stop, stop loving you as my neighbor or brother, or brother of the Lord, Lord you may you go may out there on the parking lot one day after church and your car is gone. gone. Brother Brad's riding down the road in Brother, brother Kelly's car. Seriously. Seriously. That's, That's an ill thing. thing. How would you like that brother Abel to walk outside and somebody's going stole your car? Thou shalt not, not steal. steal. But if but I, I love you as myself, myself I'm going to do unto you as I would have you to do unto me. me. I'm not going to steal your car because, because when the service is over here a little while, while I don't want Abel or someone, someone else to take in my car. car. So love worketh no ill to his neighbor. This is really elementary. I taught this to the kids in the past. Love God. First four have to do with God. No other no God, God before him, him. No, no idols, don't, don't take, take his, his name, name in vain, honor, honor the Sabbath, as I lightly, lightly touched on. on. Then the, then the other, other six have to do with others, others. Your, your parents, parents, your mother, your, your father, your, father, your neighbor, your, neighbor, your fellow your man. man. Don't, don't kill him, don't commit don't adultery, adultery. Don't, don't steal what is his or hers. If you do these things, God will bless you. If you believe that. Verse 16. Thou shalt, Thou shalt not bear, bear false, false witness, witness against thy neighbor. neighbor. Brother Hunt, Brother I don't, I don't like, like for somebody to lie against, against me, me or to me. And I believe, I believe it's safe to say no one in here would like for someone to bear false witness. I can say, yeah, I saw, I saw Brother Pat the other day driving down the road, got a miller in one hand and a cigarette in the other. That's evil. Or I saw such and such, and such person, person do this or do that or, that or go to this place or, or, or say these terrible, terrible things, things, use a lot of profanity. profanity. That's evil. I've heard, I've heard it said by you long ago, Pastor. Pastor. We, we say, say God, God can do anything, but one thing he can't do, he can't lie. lie. So God, so God doesn't want us to lie, but to speak the truth, speak it in love. You believe that? But if I, I cease, cease to love, to love you, you as my neighbor, neighbor, as my brother or sister of the Lord, I may, I may say, say things, things against you or even to you, you that are false. false. And in and closing, closing, verse 17, 17 thou, thou shalt, shalt not. I'm going to say shalt not. not. 
That's a commandment. It's not optional. We have to obey what God has said or we'll suffer the consequences. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. I believe, I believe it's okay it's to say, say, Lord, I ask the Father that you will bless, bless me. me. As, As you bless, bless another, another brother, brother with, say, a, say good a good wife, wife or you bless him financially, or a good car, a dependable car. car. I, I, I believe that's, that's okay. okay. You don't want to compare yourself. You mentioned that the other day. But here it's talking about coveting his wife, his ox, his ass, his maid servant. Now you're now not wanting something so maybe kind of like what Brother Hunt has or Brother so and so. You're wanting their wife, their, their, their husband, their, their possessions. possessions. And that the coveting, you know, God showed us years ago, one sin leads to another. You believe that, church? Somebody will covet your automobile, then what will they do? They'll steal you. Or they'll kill you to obtain it. So they coveted, they murdered or killed you, then they stole your vehicle. When the police, the police finally arrest them, then they lie to try, to try to get out of it. One sin leads to another. But who wants to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost, not fulfill the lust of the flesh, and walk up right before? God bless you tonight. Clap your hands under the Lord. Well, I have 25 minutes to prepare. I pray you got something out of this lesson tonight. God bless you. Pastor, you want to come on? Sister Vicky, if you want to sing a song and take the service from here. Thank you for allowing me to teach tonight. Let's give the Lord and Brother Brad a hand clap. Don't you love the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. I'll tell you what I want us to do tonight. I want us to come to the altar together. I want us to have a, a, a loving altar. Do you love, do you love your, neighbor your neighbor today, today to sit beside you? Well, I want you to come and pray with your neighbor today. Uh, I know sometimes we come and pray for ourselves. And a lot of times that's needed. But would you find somebody at the altar to pray with tonight because you love your brother, you love your sister. Let's pray together as Sister Holly blesses with a force.